For the last year, we've been turning this school bus into our dream tiny home on wheels. And we've been documenting and sharing our journey with you the entire time. But you may have missed some of our updates. So here's the complete compilation from the beginning until now. Now that our school bus is home, it's time to get to work. First step, remove the seats. Grabbed a socket wrench and got right to work. Glad we have this little helper. And just like that, the first seat is out. Now onto the rest of them. Let's speed it up. The last three were a little trickier, so we grinded them out and added them to the pile. The next step is removing the floor. Our floor was held down by all of these screws. Sounds easy enough, but these aren't vroom, vroom, screws. These are brr, 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 screws. They went all the way to the bottom of the bus, were rusted and stripped, and getting them out took forever. So the method that ended up working for us was using a hole saw to cut around each screw. Now that we got the hang of it, let's speed it up. Next up is removing the plywood. First, we jumped into it, trying to pry it by hand, but that proved to get us nowhere at all. Even without the tracks, each piece of plywood was still being held down by the bolts going through the bottom of the bus. And if that wasn't annoying enough, every piece also had its own perimeter of nails. Not even Pamela in her prime could get this wood up, so we grabbed the handy grinder and got to work. If you plan to build a bus, let me just say, during the removal process, this will be your best friend. We started by cutting off the tops of the bolts, and then we went back around to grind off the nail heads. Once those were gone, it made getting the wood up much easier. With some muscle and the help of a floor jack, we got them all out in no time at all. With the wood gone, we were finally able to see the extent of the rust below. Fortunately for us, there were no major problem spots, and it was just some simple surface rust. So today, we start the rust removal process. But first, a quick trip to the store. Now that we have the supplies in hand, we gave the floor a quick cleaning with a scrub brush and simple green degreaser, getting up any dirt, grime, and old caulking. Once cleaned, we used a 36 grit flap disc on the grinder and focused on all the rusted areas, making sure to break away any of the loose rust. Then we switched to a palm sander with 40 grit sandpaper to knock down the old existing glue. This will help once we get to the primer and paint steps. Here's what it looked like before, and here's what it looked like after. Moving on to removing the glue on the wheel wells, we started with a wire brush attachment, but ended up switching to the palm sander. We found it to be much faster to use and easier to control. Now that we removed all the rust we could by hand, the next step is to apply the rust converter and finally be one step closer to painting the floor. Today we begin painting the floor. Here's what the floors looked like before with rust, and here's what they looked like after. We started by rolling on the rust converter and then applied another coat by brush. Once that was dried, we began sealing up the 400 plus holes. We're using JB sticks. You mix it by hand, which is a long, tedious, and sticky process. Now that every hole is filled, we grind it down and clean the floor for the primer. Seeing it all one color was a huge milestone in the build. We have more work to do before we paint the final color. Tiny House School Bus Update. Today we're removing the original 20-year-old panels and insulation. Using an air hammer, we knocked out the center of the rivets, then came back around with the air chisel and knocked the rivets off. This was so much faster than grinding them off with an angle grinder. Once the rivets were gone, the panels dropped down, revealing what we expected to be nasty, moldy fiberglass insulation, but it was actually pretty clean in most parts, which is good news. No major roof leaks to worry about. Last came the wall panels and insulation, and now we're ready to work on resealing the windows for leaks. Today, we're removing the rear heater from the bus and looping the lines. We debated long enough whether or not we wanted to keep the heater, but ultimately decided we didn't want to risk a hose leaking coolant inside the bus down the road. So with the hoses cut and the coolant drained, we looped the lines and topped the radiator back off with fresh coolant. And we're hoping that it's gonna work out for us. We don't know, never done this before. Right, Natalie? Yes. <laughs> Today we started what is going to be a very long process of removing, cleaning, sealing, painting, and reinstalling all of the windows. We started with four windows so we could figure out what the heck we're doing. First step, remove all of the old sealant. After struggling with Goo Gone and Acetone, we ended up using a wire brush. Now that it's clean, we taped it off to prepare for new sealant and paint. This is just one window finish and it pretty much took half the day and we have 18 more to do. Uh, but it's gonna look so good when it's finished and we can't wait. We weren't kidding when we said this would be a very long and tedious process, but it's really important to make sure we have no leaks on the inside of the bus moving forward. So while all the windows were removed, we cleaned up and removed all of the old sealant left behind on the bus. After the help of some friends, we were able to clean the old sealant off all 18 windows. We started taping out our floor plan layout. Let us know if you want to see our ideas and we'll make a video on it soon. If you want to see longer bus updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have tons of content since the beginning that we'll be editing and uploading soon. Link is in our profile. Today we begin prepping the window channels so we can put the windows back in and reseal them. We use goof off and a scraper to remove any leftover residue, then scuff up the area and wipe it clean with acetone to prime the metal. We used white primer for the bottom and inside to match the inside of the windows and black primer for the top outside rain deflector. The rest of it gets covered up by the window and eventually wood trim, so it doesn't need much, but here's how it looks. Last but not least, we sprayed the rivets with Flex Seal to hopefully help keep any water out. And that's it.
These are now ready for windows, but we have all these still left to clean and prep, so we'll see you in a few days. This week we finished getting all the windows back on the bus and resealed. Here we are using butyl tape to go around the edge of every window. Water inside is bad, so this step is super important. Window leaks are very common on buses, so we took our time to ensure we properly secured everything before moving forward. Once the windows were in, we went around the outside, pushing the butyl tape to make sure there were no gaps. This will keep a tight, secure seal and keep any water out of the inside of the bus. That looks good. Here's what the windows look like from the inside and here's what they look like on the outside. The four spots you see without windows are where we will be placing sheet metal. These spots will be covered up by the fridge, shower, closet, and pantry, so the window itself isn't needed. We're so close to insulating the walls and floor and finally getting the bus to take the shape of a home. Last weekend, we began removing all the wires that are no longer in use. These are wires from the old speakers, interior lights, emergency exits, morning flashers that are just no longer being used. We finally got our window blanks delivered, same process as installing the windows. We run butyl tape along the edges, shove it in place, then use these self-drilling screws to secure it in place. And that's it. Here's how it looks from the inside, and here's how it looks from the outside. We need your help deciding which color to paint them in the future. Do we paint them white to match the roof and attract less heat, or do we paint them black to match the flow of the windows but attract more heat? After visiting another family with a bus, we realized our original living area plan was a bit small, so we went back to the drawing board and came up with a whole new floor plan. In doing so, the window deletes we just installed unfortunately had to be moved from here to over here. So we had to do the old switcheroo, but with the windows back in finally, again, now we can move on to mounting the fans and skylight. Which brings us to our question, should we install the skylight in the front by the living area or in the back by the bed? David. This week we're installing fans in the roof, and that means these old crusty emergency hatches gotta go. Thanks. Ran out of goof off. Gonna need to go make a trip to the store. So let's go. Aisle 12. Since the opening for the fan is only 14 inches and the hatch was much bigger, we had to install this panel over the top first. Good old butyl tape, lap sealant, and a bunch of roofing right. screws later, we have a fan installed. And then we just repeated for the other side. We have a fan! They're down now, but you can see them uh, where the emergency hatches used to be. So, we have fans. We did it! We have fans! We're painting the floors next. Should we choose safety blue or flat black? Where we're finally painting the floors of our tiny house school bus. If you're new here, this is what the floors looked like before. And a lot of people said they saw a face, and I don't know. What do you think? Oh, God. So after making a little bit of a mess, we got to work. If you guessed safety blue, you were right. And here's what it looks like. It looks so good. What do you think? Did we make the right choice? Now it's time to order our shower base. Let us know in the comments. Should we choose black or white? With the plywood loaded, it's time to pick out the insulation panels. I know what you're thinking. Four panels at once? Wow, he's so strong. So you know that saying, measure twice, cut once? Well, it should really be measure twice, cut twice because you didn't get it right the first time. Oh, a turkey cutter. Thanksgiving must be early this year. Now that we got it cut just right, it's time to slap the glue down like a two-year-old coloring. Boom, first panel in. Now five more to go. But before we go further ahead, we need to know, do we put the shower on the left side or the right side? This week, we're installing the plywood floor over the insulation. The first piece is a little tricky, so we traced around the wheel wells and cut them out. Then spread on a of your grandma's gravy, put a bunch of weight on overnight, and voila! First piece is done. Repeated with the rest, and now we have to wait for it to cure. So we'll see you in a few days when we have a full floor. Last update, we started installing our floors, and this update, we're finished. The floor's looking like a floor, if you guys haven't seen it yet. Yes! So you know what that means. What does it seeming to become the motto of the build? It's time to paint. This is a mold and mildew resistant primer, so it's great for protecting the floors. And we'll also be using it on all of our interior framing pieces. Speaking of, we're gonna get started on ripping and painting those as well. We're also spraying this window and door insulating foam to seal the cracks between the bus wall and the plywood. Once it dries, we can slice off the excess and use it for sword fighting. Last week we finished priming the floors. We have floors, yay! And this week we begin framing out the walls. Big thanks to our friend Bucket once again for helping out. Let's start by ripping down the plywood sheets and glue and screw. These wood strips will give us attachment points for our walls, cabinets, etc. Once we're finished, we can begin insulating the walls and start framing our beds, bathroom walls, seating, and more. We're getting closer and closer to making this bus look like a home. Natalie, what's Daddy doing today? Building the bus. We're gonna do it real well. <laughs> All right, let's watch him do it. Here goes nothing. No idea what I'm doing, though. No idea. We 
right, we are officially going to use our first piece of Havelock wool. We obviously have no idea how much we're supposed to be using, but this seems right. It seems pretty fluffy. It looks so big. And here it is. It opens up for some extra storage underneath and there are three individual slide outs to create a dinette, lounge, and even a guest bed. It's not complete. We'll still need some custom cushions to fit, legs to support the slides, and trim and paint to make it look pretty. Follow us to watch us turn this bus into a home. By some miracle, we've actually decided which fridge we're going to purchase, but we need your help deciding, are we going to get white or black? Here's the black one and here's the white one. We started this week with buying our fridge. If you suggested a black fridge, then thank you. That's what we picked. Then to get started on the bunk beds, we had to buy a mattress to build it around but we changed the floor plan to accommodate a king bed in the back and now we just don't have any room for it. After that, we went to a farm, skinned a couple of sheep and insulated our walls with our wool. Pretty cool. Then we brought out something that we thought we'd never see again, the dreaded butyl tape. Then ripped out the emergency windows, replaced them with regular ones and locked that butyl tape away for good or <laughs> until we put the skylight in our future bathroom. Then with some help from our good friend Bucket, we did some things with some wires and now like magic, the old emergency lights at the top are extra turn signals and brake lights. Nice. And we changed the floor plan again because why not? Moving the fridge from this side to this side, clearing up some space. So, uh, yeah, I guess we do have room for that bunk bed after all. And this week we're destroying it all. That's it, we're done. We're tired of this freaking build. Okay, maybe not everything, but now that that's gone, it's time to build the bunk bed. The main posts are screwed into the floor, the wall, and into the metal ribs of the bus. And the bed supports are screwed into the posts and joined together using joist hangers and corner brackets. After that, it was time for the bunk walls. Using a magnetic electrical box locator, we traced, cut, glued, and nailed the walls up. This last step is obviously Eddie's favorite because he always finds a way to spill paint all over himself. <laughs> so now that the first coat of primer is up, we're wondering, should we paint the bunk walls or do a wallpaper instead? This week we got our first kitchen cabinet. We get it 75% off because of this damage, which will be hidden anyways, so who cares? Next up was the framing for our bathroom. With lots of measuring and more measuring and then some cutting and screwing, the walls are framed. Now we can get a bucket and poop in peace. Well, we should probably put some walls up first. After that, we ran the wires and planned the placement of our interior bus lights. It literally just rolled out of the bus. I got it. In the bedroom, we'll have four, the bunk and hallway, two each, bathroom one, and six total in the living area. And here's what they look like. Finally, we put the wall up in the bedroom area. So do you want to see us work on the bedroom next or should we move forward with the kitchen? This week, we plan to start framing our king bed, but then this guy came all the way from New York and said, let's paint a school bus. If you've never painted a bus before, let's show you what it's like. There's reflective tape everywhere and decals too, and all of those gotta go. Then there's sanding and more sanding and taping everything you don't want painted like windows and wheels. It's a little frustrating, but totally worth it because finally it's time to prime and paint. Which color would you choose? And just like that, it's all over. And that stranger you met from the internet is now a part of your journey forever. We painted our bus and we chose this awesome peach color. So if you're wondering why we chose peach, our bus is from Pelham, Alabama and we're Sam Hunt fans. If you know, you know. We're not completely finished. This and this need to be white. These and these need to be painted black. Huge thanks to our friend Jordan who made this possible, came out and helped us paint. I can hardly believe in a few short months. This bus is gonna be our home. This week we planned to finish painting the outside of the bus, but with Florida being Florida, we just didn't wanna risk it. So we went back inside to finish the framing of the bed, but we realized we needed to work on the upper cabinets before it became impossible to walk around. So that meant another trip to Lowe's. And if you can guess how many trips to Lowe's we've made since we started on the bus, I will write your name on my forehead for next week's intro. At Lowe's we found this matching kitchen cabinet for only $40. Not only was it the exact size we needed, but we couldn't find anything wrong with it. Now we just have to build some custom sections over the wheel well for the oven and our kitchen will begin to take shape. We can't wait to get started on that. But first, let's finish the back. After framing the top, we built this box and secured it in. Thank God we're too lazy to take anything to the dump because we were able to use this old panel as a template to cut the curve for the face. Then with the center cut out, we use this flush trim bit on our router to smooth out the edges, which was satisfying, but messy. And that's it, we have this upper cubby with outlets. This week, Eddie had enough of the old couch design and decided to 
to destroy it and build a new one. After unscrewing everything he could, he switched to the oscillating tool to remove anything that was glued down. And with it all apart, it was time to start on our new couch design. But first we had to take a quick trip because my brother was getting married. We stayed in this super creepy cabin with way too many dead animals. Then we took a boat ride down this beautiful spring, relaxed on the beach and saw a lot of animals that were very much alive. Then back on the bus, which was quite frankly hazardously dirty. So we tied it up and got back to work. After a Lowe's trip for more materials, we drilled some pocket holes, tested our drawer slides and finally figured out a couch design we can be proud of. This couch isn't complete. We still have to finish the slide out extensions, paint it and get custom leather cushions made to fit. Which brings us to our question, which color should our cushions be, black or brown? But while we wait for a few more supplies, we added some more shiplap to this wall and this living room is coming together. In this update, Eddie's finishing the drawers for under the couch, which will also double as slide out extensions for sleeping, lounging, and dining. This one is an awkward shape and these two are not as deep because the wheel wells are hidden under the couch. It's not finished. We'll need to add the faces of the drawers plus trim and paint, but it's already so much better than the previous couch build. In order to move forward with the kitchen, Eddie had to finish the framing of the shower to put up both walls between the fridge. Using his super legit cardboard template, he cut over the curve of the bus and attached it to the framing. With both walls up, we decided we wanted to raise the fridge off the floor a little. So to make best use of the space, Eddie made a custom storage drawer for underneath. No, no. Uh, I give up. Before we can put the fridge in, we'll need to prime and paint. So holding off for that for now, Eddie moved on to the upper cabinets for the kitchen. With the pieces cut and the skeleton of the cabinets assembled, he mounted it to the wall as well as the ribs of the bus. We'll need to assemble the face trim and eventually cabinet doors, but we plan to save all the finishing trim work for later on. I previously made this upper cubby and it was perfect, except it had one major flaw. We had no way to access the wires for our backup cam once it was in place. And since the upper cabinets are screwed into it for support, it's not coming back down. Speaking of not coming back down, you guys have crushed it. We're less than 600K away from one million and this would be the perfect spot for the gold play button so please hit that subscribe button after taking it back down i cut a hole and we'll cover it with a door or some type of decor to hide it in the future but right now we're going to insulate behind it we're using wool yeah from a sheet we've used it in our walls and it keeps the bus much cooler or warmer if you live in antarctica it's natural it suppresses mold and mildew it resists fire it's non-toxic i mean have you ever seen a toxic sheet before and no i'm not talking about facebook comments either those sheep are pretty toxic but before we can do the upper cabinet on the other side we had to move the bathroom wall back first. I'll explain why in the full video. You can go watch it here. 